Okay, today, my friends, is the day ranking all the Star Wars movies that are non cartoon, non animated, S tier to D tier. Now, S tier being perfect, I wouldn't change anything about it. I personally think it's perfect. D tier is get it out of my face. I can't stand it. A tier is, it's not perfect, but I still think it's amazing. B tier is, eh, I, I enjoy it. Throw it on. I'll watch it. I thoroughly enjoy it. C tier is, uh, uh, and D tier, like I said, completely get it out of my face. Now these have been randomized. Um, so I opened up the app, got into it, and uh, we're actually gonna scroll down just a little bit. There we go. So we can get that ad out of the way. Anyway, so it's completely randomized right here. Um, and we're gonna obviously go from left to right. So starting off strong, the first one, Rogue One. And to me, so I actually, not to flex, but I actually got to see Rogue One at a private private screening a day before it released. There was, I remember the hype, like the hype around this movie, it, there was, it wasn't like there was crazy expectations around it, but people were just intrigued. And it, it, I, I want to say it was a tempered excitement in the sense that People were just interested to see what was going on. People weren't expecting to see so-and-so and this person and this person. I feel a lot of us already knew what was going to happen because there's 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 no Rogue, Rogue One in the other movies. But seeing this movie, to me, I personally think it is one of the most important Star Wars movies. And it does bridge a huge gap um, or answer some big questions. So for me... Rogue One up there in S tier. Now, I know a lot of people, there are a lot of people who thought that Rogue One wasn't as good as some of the others on here, that it was filler. There are people out there who think that Rogue One, but and it kind of is filler in the sense that it fills in a lot of holes or questions that we have, mainly that why was the Death Star so vulnerable? But it obviously, sadly, introduces to some really awesome characters and sadly, it, it killed them off, like, right after we started getting invested in them. Anyway, S tier for me. Next one is The Force Awakens. And to me, even just seeing this in the theater, I was scratching my head. I really didn't know how to feel about The Force Awakens. Um, so with that in mind, I... <sighs> I do want to do a video talking about all of them, like in depth, how I feel about all of these. But to me, The Force Awakens, even leaving the theater, I, I know a lot of people think it's, it's their favorite or think it's the best out of the sequel trilogy. And while that may be true, to me, like I, oh, the biggest thing that really got me with The Force Awakens was that Rey obviously knew about Luke Skywalker, knew the legend of Luke Skywalker. But then Kylo Ren when they have their lightsaber lockup, says, you need a teacher. I can show you the ways of the force. And Ray's like the force as if she didn't just barely use a Jedi mind trick five minutes before that, that to me and my biggest gripe used to be that they killed off Han Solo still a big gripe, but everybody knows the stories and stuff behind that. Anyway, to me, the force awakens is right down there for me. And that's just because I still, I, st I don't want to say like, oh, it, it, it started everything here. And then it just went down to me. The force awakens was right, right, right in the middle for me. It, it just, it, it didn't scratch the star Wars itch that we had been waiting for and anticipating for a seventh star Wars movie. The next one is solo. And I know I'll get a lot of flack for this a lot of flack. I personally loved Solo. I had such a good time with it. Lando is one of my favorite characters. 
I, I, I like stories that deal with lower level stuff. So like Andor and all that other stuff that aren't centered around the Jedi and the Sith. And I know a ton of people are probably like, what the heck? Why do you watch Star Wars then? But to me, I personally think that this was a fun heist movie. It was a fun Star Wars story. It didn't need to be crazy serious or take itself too serious, even though like this next to Rogue One is one of, and the Clone Wars is one of the only Star Wars things where death is really permanent. All of Beckett's crew wiped out. Beckett himself wiped out. It it also planted the seed of Crimson Dawn. And I I just had a really good time with Solo. I personally feel, while it's not underrated to me, it's overhated. Um, people say bad writing, bad this, bad that. I, I had fun with it. Now, yes, I'm not a fan of... Still not a fan of the, uh, the, the, the actor they chose for Han, but that's neither here nor there. It didn't completely pull me out of the movie. The love story in that, eh, we all knew Han was going to end up with Leia anyway. So I'm like, oh, the Kira thing could have been childhood friends, but even still solo is going in B tier for me. I can turn it on, have it be background noise, or just sit down and watch it, and I enjoy it either way. Huh, Empire Strikes Back. Do do I really do I really need do I really need to elaborate on this? Probably one of the most the darkest Star Wars movies. And I know people are probably like, "What the heck are you talking about?" But if you really really think about it you really truly think about it right excuse me that's some technical difficulties but if you really think about it like obviously leia watches her father and there's a lot of fan theories out there where people are like oh leia knew that vader was her father the second she saw him um in uh a new hope and all this different stuff so people were saying that leia had been known vader was her father um and so she watched her father not father, but you know what I mean. Torture her lover, you know. Luke fights, has that whole Dagobah scene where he has to fight the Darth Vader. It, it's just, it, and then obviously the fight between Luke and Vader. It, it's, it's such, I don't think people give it credit for being as dark as it really is. People say it's the best, probably the best Star Wars movie. Um, but to me... It's definitely the darkest, and it, it, it it's Empire Strikes Back. Get up there in S tier. <laughs> okay. Star Wars, A New Hope. To me, personally, one of the perfect Star Wars movies. If not the perfect Star Wars movie. Because, now this might be a hot take, but with a lot of these other movies, you're sitting down and you're watching, and you're like, oh, wait, wait till it gets to this part. Wait till it gets to this part. Wait till it gets to this part. But with A New Hope, you sit down and it's it's Star Wars through and through. Yes, it doesn't have the best lightsaber duel. But truly, that's not a crazy argument when every other single thing just hits right. The dialogue, the space battles, the humor. There is still not a Star Wars scene that makes me laugh as hard as... Han running after the stormtroopers and then turning around and running back. If I could have a golden S tier, I would put a new hope there. Cause personally for me, it deserves to be above every other movie. Attack of the clones. Now growing up with the prequels, um, obviously some people think I have a bias, but to me, Attack of the Clones, I got to see it in the theaters with my cousins. And just when I think of Attack of the Clones, I think of the childhood memories I had of it. Not really necessarily the story. Um, there are things that I wish would have been changed with Attack of the Clones. Um, I wish, and like I made a video about it, but I wish Anakin and Padme, the dynamics a little different there. Um, but I still, 
thoroughly enjoy Attack of the Clones. Um, it's it, again, it's a fun ride, and you can't beat. Now, to 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 uh, contradict what I said about A New Hope, here with Attack of the Clones is that you can't beat the Geonosis Battle Arena scene. Prime. So. While it does have its many, many flaws, and the music, obviously, what you're hearing now is uh, Across the Stars. And I love, what I love so much, so much about Attack of the Clones is how much was actual practical set. And I I, I don't know anybody who hasn't thought of, uh, thought of visiting, uh, I think it's Italy, if I remember correctly, Naboo. Um, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm going to put it here in B tier because it's, it's another one of those that I can sit down thoroughly, enjoy it, but also, you know, if it, if it's playing at a, at a, at a, at a function in the background, I'm like, just chill. I'm like, Oh, Hey, cool. But like I said, I can sit down and enjoy it. Empire. Uh, oh, not empire strikes back return of the Jedi. Now this wildly enough was the first star Wars movie I ever saw. I saw the original trilogy in a weird reverse order, I saw it six, four, five. And even as a kid, to me, it was never my favorite. I didn't, again, even as a kid, I didn't like the whole beginning of the rescue of Han. Not because I thought it didn't fit in the movie, but A, like, as a kid, obviously, the Rancor and Jabba the Hutt terrified me. And this is well before we even knew what Jabba looked like, like right before the sequel or before the prequels, any of that stuff. Um, but even just growing up, I'm like, really, what was Luke's plan? Um, I know a lot of people probably argue that point and just be like, well, he did this and he did this. And I, I, <laughs> it just didn't grab me. I'm, I'm like, why didn't they all? I don't know. I don't know. This isn't, this isn't a why didn't they session. Um, Probably, but yeah, it's lower on the bar for me when it comes to the OT. And I know a lot of people are like, you can't say anything bad about the OT, but it wasn't my cup of tea through and through. It was the Battle of Endor, that whole scene, that whole segment, final act, amazing. But I, I can make a video explaining it a little bit more. Just some of my confusions. But for that, we get our first A tier. It's not perfect. But it's still, it's it, you got to respect the classics, and there's just some things in there where I'm just like, okay. Anyway, a hot take after putting Return of the Jedi down there is The Phantom Menace. And I already know I'm going to get a ton of flack for this, but I don't care. I welcome it. The Phantom Menace is my favorite Star Wars movie. And I say that without shame. Growing up on The Phantom Menace, again, to me, I don't really see very many valid arguments as to why this movie is so bad or why people hate this movie so much. Again, to me, it's a movie through and through that I can sit down and enjoy every second of it as if it's the first time I'm seeing it. This movie also cranked all the expectations up for music in Star Wars up to 11 and redefined the lightsaber duel while giving us awesome sound design with the pod race scene. Also the emotional scene to me, and I get chills just thinking about it right now, when Anakin says goodbye to his mother and John Williams does his thing, Anakin's walking away. Also some of the deleted scenes, and I could say this too for, uh, Attack of the Clones, the deleted scenes would have added a little bit more depth to uh, to uh, the Phantom Menace. But for me, also side hot take, I'm completely, I was completely fine with Darth Maul being dead. Just saying. Anyway, is top five of my characters, but perfect. Love the Phantom Menace. Now we get to the big three, and I think, to me, these are the three most talked about Star Wars movies. And I feel like the app or the website did this on purpose. Um, 
So, I, I know I'm probably going to get dragged for my takes on The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker, right? For me, The Last Jedi deserves to be right here. Now, I know a ton of people, which if you would like to explain to me down in the comments below, so many people are like, The Last Jedi is miles above The Rise of Skywalker, which to me... I don't see it. And I'll get to the rise of Skywalker in a second. To me, the last Jedi should have been over in five minutes because there is a fleet, a fleet of star destroyers following them. And Imperial star destroyers could carry at least 40 TIE fighters. At least 40 TIE fighters. one star destroyer so why didn't they just send out two ships worth of tie fighters and just take out the resistance right there instead of just slowly following them that's my biggest gripe with the movie biggest gripe aside from the luke stuff the the snoke stuff ray's training which while it was refreshing to see ray actually train somewhat i feel like the focus should have been more on ray training and not on the canto bite stuff which again i'm not i'm not going to get into that right here also there's no actual lightsaber duel for the first time in a star wars movie there's no actual lightsaber duel it's luke's projection against kylo But I, I know there are people out there who love The Last Jedi, but I, I don't see it. I don't see it. So with The Last Jedi, I'm going to talk about The Rise of Skywalker real quick. The Rise of Skywalker to me at this point in time, the reason that I'm not as harsh on The Rise of Skywalker as I'm The Last Jedi is I was already beat up <laughs> by the time I got to this movie. I had no expectations i had no hopes no dreams but still with my adhd brain the movie kept its pace it really didn't lead you into something really really interesting and then pull it away for something completely random like canto bite when you're getting the four stuff between ray and ben and ray training and luke and you're like holy cow this is interesting this is cool yoink their canto bite we got to free these horses i didn't see any of that really um yes palpatine being back was it was a doozy but i i was i was far more entertained with the rise of skywalker than really the force awakens and the last jedi but still i'm gonna put the rise of skywalker in c tier now the big one revenge of the sith so my take on revenge of the sith is that i i don't judge revenge of the sith based on what a lot of people base it on is the story anakin's turn to the dark side all that stuff like they're obviously the adult me dissects it ingests it all that good stuff above everything else i always see revenge of the sith through the the lens of my 2005 young self the lens of the toys and Battlefront 2 and going over and hanging out with my friends and having the, the fling out lightsaber duels, the go all the action figures, just creating our own Jedi and whatnot or pretending to be Anakin or Obi-Wan or Grievous or whoever. Um, that's how the scope I really look through. I look at Revenge of the Sith with um, and just how it made me feel back in those days now coming to my adult mind honestly i think the biggest thing aside from everything else that revenge of the sith was and is to me it was like eat, like eating a eating a, a meal and just being completely satisfied just looking back even to this day 
I was completely content with then having four, five, and six. I think Rogue One answered a question that everybody wanted answered, introduced new interesting characters. But I was still, even without Rogue One, I was still like, okay, let's go into episode four. Again, I know there's stories to be told. But to me, Revenge of the Sith wrapped everything up, put a bow on it, said here is the story of young Anakin Skywalker till he becomes Darth Vader. Now, obviously, Peter want, P- Peter, people want a Vader saga. Three movies about the years leading up until episode four. Sure. I... <sighs> I could go either way because the stuff that we've gotten now, while some of it is great, I'm just like, give us comics, give us books, give us something that we can actually like pull apart. And I don't know. I feel with Vader stuff to me, you have to be very, very careful and do it extremely carefully. And I, I'm the type of person that doesn't want to take that gamble, but revenge of the Sith right up there in S tier. Well, that'll do it, my friends, for this video. If you like what you saw, want to see more, let me know down below. I do want to do a rating all of the Star Wars TV shows, but there's so many. I I, I still I have still haven't even fully seen Rebels yet, or fully finished Andor, because just being an adult in life, you get there's so much you got to keep up with now with Star Wars, and there's so little time so maybe i'll get to it someday but until then take care of yourselves my friends